Photography has changed as a mode of communication now. It used to be a science and an art. It's now almost the language of communication between people. The revolution in compact cameras is such that everybody can own a camera and there's a very good quality camera on most personal mobile phones. And they're only going to increase in their quality and the camera will eventually be dispensed with. How often, for example, do you, in the middle of a conversation, whip out your phone and say, this, you know, that I did this yesterday. You know, this is what it was like on this hill. This is what it was like at Marks and Spencer's. Did you see the queues? You'll have actually photographed it, you know? And so everybody is making a visual record of their life now. And because of that, I think that your, your mode of expression is being represented visually all the time. And it's, and, and it's part of the voice that you use. As regards the question of um, do people see any more, I think they see even more right now, and they now have the ability to record it. From my point of view, I'm actually trying to photograph things you can't see. The space in between. What something feels like, not what it is. Therefore, I'm likely to record the atmosphere and texture of an area a location, a feeling I have in the location I'm having it in order to express myself artistically. That's what it is for me. The technical side of photography is of little interest to me. It's of little interest to me how something is achieved technically. It's a bit like a musical instrument. If you have a handle on it, it'll be working and, and following your intuition and so I've got to the stage where the camera is an intuitive expression. I also feel that photography intrudes in the moment in which I'm experiencing therefore I'm trying to close that gap so that it's seamless so that I'm recording at the same time as experiencing without making a fuss about it. The essence of something is best experienced not recorded the ability to talk about something and to express yourself through poetry or writing or art or dance or photography or whatever is the joy of the practitioner to be able to do that. I'm not interested in the technical side because all cameras faithfully record what you point them at. So it's what you point them at and what you frame within that little rectangle. The brevity of which something really big is happening is extremely quick. I mean, you, you might set yourself up to photograph sunset or something like that, but the moment of sunset is very, very brief, and the excitement and, and, of the build-up of light and then the ebbing of light is, is absolutely intense, and even if you're well-planned, you're still scurrying about with different lenses, lens changing, new ideas emerge as different things come into your vision, into your inner vision, perhaps, rather than your outer vision. The words come first because, in fact, not just the words come first, but the space between the words comes first. In Japanese haiku, there are only 15 words available in every stanza, and it relies on the space and the order of those words. And photography is quite similar. Once again, I must refer to the fact that I'm not trying to record a place, but actually what it feels like. And to do that, a total photographic depiction of what you're seeing is not enough. It's like um, Minor White said, the great American photographer, he said let's photograph it and then let's photograph what it really is. Let the landscape or the subject that you're looking at emerge as you're going along rather than take an idea out there and struggle to find it because you'll be looking for a needle in a haystack to attune your mind to be receptive to what's before you is the key and all the doors will just open before your very eyes and you'll start to see things for the first time the sound of a mountain stream will suddenly impress itself emotionally upon you and you'll see it very clearly as being stretched into an image and then you simply point your camera at it